Hey guys, so species extinction, obviously this is a pretty controversial topic, but I think it's really important to discuss because we see arguments for it on both sides and also because it is logically associated with some rather troubling concepts. On the vegan animal agriculture side, it's clear that deforestation for grazing and growing feed for livestock is one of the leading causes of species extinction today. This study reported on in Science suggests that it is the leading cause. The habitat loss is so great that it will cause more extinctions than any other factor, particularly when coupled with other deleterious effects of livestock production, including climate change and pollution. These changes will have major negative impacts on biodiversity. Many, many species will be lost. And then from the Carnist perspective, many argue that, you know, if we don't eat cows and pigs and chickens, etc., that they'll go extinct. But this reasoning has some pretty obvious weaknesses. First, even if the world did go vegan, it's not likely that these animals would go extinct. Yes, their numbers would drop drastically, but that's not extinction. Due to the number of zoos and sanctuaries that already harbor these animals, extinction of any species or even subspecies just isn't a plausible outcome of the world going vegan. And yep, it's true, farmed animals are really in zoos. Cows seem to be the most common. And it's not just zoos and sanctuaries. You know, while not as common as dogs and cats, many of these animals, particularly pigs, are already kept by people as pets. And second, even if we do consider the implausible scenario of actual extinction, so no farms, no sanctuaries, no pigs as pets, we're really only dealing with a few species. Comparing extinction caused by animal agriculture to extinction prevented by it is no contest. If biodiversity is what's valued, animal agriculture is the opposite of that. We're talking about only a handful of species for billions of individual animals. Take cows, for example, of the genus Bose. There are only seven species, nine if you include bison, less than half of which are domesticated. And of those that are domesticated, most of them have wild relatives that probably are just subspecies rather than separate species. So all farmed cows vanishing from the earth means one or two species. In terms of domestic sheep, we're looking at just one species. Even less diversity applies to domestic pigs, a subspecies of wild boar, and chickens, which are a subspecies of red jungle fowl. Likewise, ducks are various breeds and subspecies of two species with wild populations as well. The same with goats and turkeys, where domestic and wild are the same species. And the many different fish that people eat are all wild species. So two actual species, three if you push it, and a handful of subspecies, basically breeds, versus countless species we can only make ballpark estimates about, it's likely in the millions. The only arguments meat eaters are left with are appeals to Alan Savory style claims about grazing and how traditional animal agriculture is good for the environment, which have been thoroughly debunked. In other words, if you care about species preservation and biodiversity, then you should not support animal agriculture. But should you care? I mean, does the biodiversity argument even matter? And what are its implications if we insist that it does? From an ethical perspective, individuals are sentient. They have interests, they feel happiness and pain and suffering, and they don't want to die. The forces that cause species extinction can do harm to individuals, but a species is not a being. If a species dies out, is it any more of a loss than the sum of individual suffering caused by its individuals dying? And what if they die due to old age and natural causes, and the species went extinct because they just couldn't reproduce? It's very hard to argue that species have intrinsic value, and if we go there, we enter into some pretty shaky territory. Species is pretty arbitrary. As animals become more distantly related, it's harder for them to reproduce together. But even between more distant species, there's still introgression. Consider hybrids and ring species. Genus, species, subspecies, breed. When we talk about the notion of an organism having some kind of intrinsic evolutionary prerogative to preserve its kind, that argument very easily slips from species to race because it's not based in anything. Okay, because this is what's gonna happen. Your great-great-grandkids yeah. are going to be brown. Spencer can laugh all he wants and pretend that it's not true, 
but it is. More importantly, it's perfectly fine because there is no intrinsic value to race. Instead, there is intrinsic harm caused by people like Spencer who are struggling to preserve some illusion of purity. The problem here is that if we make these kinds of arguments for species preservation, arguments for the intrinsic value of an arbitrary category of living things, then we risk legitimizing racist arguments like white nationalism or concerns for white genocide. So are there any pragmatic arguments for preserving species? It doesn't seem so, or at least not very many. In terms of biodiversity, ecologists enthusiastically tell us how important it is, but their arguments tend to center on aesthetics. Basically, that nature is beautiful. The only pragmatic ones involve exceptional examples, like pollinators for useful plants. But we already breed pollinators we need for agriculture, and not just honeybees, but bumblebees and various other insects too. Obligate mutualism is very rare. There's also talk about efficiency of ecosystems, but in reality, there are only a handful of niches with interchangeable species that live all around the world. Usually species die out because something else took their place and filled the niche more successfully. Successfully. Advocates for preservation also talk about all of the potential life-saving medicines that we could find, but that's not how medicine works anymore. They don't find and test every random chemical in the rainforest. That would be completely impractical. Molecular biology has advanced to the point that scientists look for proteins or enzymes to target. They understand the kinds of molecules that can do it based on the mechanisms and even computer simulations. So hopefully I've shown that meat eaters should not be using species preservation biodiversity as a reason not to go vegan, and vegans should not be using it as a reason to go vegan. As strong and intuitive as it may seem, these arguments for biodiversity species preservation they have some serious problems in terms of the reasoning behind it. The best arguments for veganism still come down to individual suffering and climate change, not saving species. Thank you so much for watching, everybody, and for those who are interested in the whole like world going vegan thing and the consequences of that, uh, I did do a response to BBC to a video they did on the topic, so you can check that out here. And yeah. Thanks again, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. Comments and questions down below. Uh, if you want to subscribe, that's super cool. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so at patreon.com slash unnaturalvegan. Thank you again, and I will have a new video very soon.